Hello and welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel, and today we're gonna make three cocktails from bartender Eric Castro. He's one of my favorite bartenders, and I've wanted to do this video for a while now. Now, if you're not familiar with Eric, he's the host of the Bartender at Large podcast. He's the owner and bartender at Polite Provisions and Raised by Wolves in San Diego. He's also the owner of Boilermaker in New York City, which is one of my favorite bars here in the city. Two out of the three drinks I'm going to make here today are pretty well known. I think you could rightfully call them modern classics. But the third one, I don't think has been published anywhere other than the menu at Boilermaker. Um, so I actually reached out to Eric um, and made sure he was cool with me posting this video and he said he was. So with his permission, I think this might be the first time this, uh, this drink, the third one I'm gonna make today, has actually been published anywhere. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. Our first one today is the Iron Ranger. And this is a tropical bourbon cocktail. You might call it tiki or you might just say that it's tiki adjacent. But if, you're ever, if you've ever thought about getting into tiki and you're not sure if it's for you, this is a good one to try because it combines a lot of those tiki elements uh, with bourbon, which might be, which you might consider to be a little bit more approachable, or maybe it's something that you're already interested in. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna make the Iron Ranger. Okay, first into our tin is a dash or two of Angostura bitters. This would also work nicely with Bitterman's Tiki Bitters if you have that on hand. Next up is half an ounce of simple syrup. I'm using a standard one-to-one -one ratio syrup that's equal parts sugar and good old New York City tap water. We're following that with three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now we need a full ounce of pineapple juice to really give it that tropical feel. Nothing fancy here, I'm just using plain old dull pineapple juice from one of those giant cans. Next is half an ounce of Velvet Falernum, and this is the ingredient that'll really push this drink into tiki territory. Velvet Falernum is a rum-based liqueur that's flavored with lime, almond, and clove, and clocks in at 11% ABV. It's not going to dominate the drink at all, but it should tie everything together and really give this drink a Caribbean feel. And finally, two ounces of bourbon. Eric's recipe calls for overproof bourbon, but I'm unfortunately all out of my beloved Wild Turkey 101, so I'm just gonna make do with this Evan Williams. If you've got a cask strength or bottled and bond option in your bar, go with that. All right, that's it. Let's add some ice to our shaker and give it a shake. Garnish for this is gonna be a sprig of mint, clap to release the aromas, of course. And if you have it, a cinnamon stick. I actually don't though, so I'm gonna go with a Luxardo cherry. All right, there it is, the Iron Ranger. Let's give it a try. Mm. Ah, oh, that is so good. The bourbon and the pineapple work surprisingly well together. One of the things that really brings it all together is the Angostura bitters and the Velvet Falernum. Those things, uh, they both have an element of spice to them and I think that kind of ties it all together. If you're interested in getting into tiki at all, this is a good first drink for you to try. Um, I think that this could open up the door for a lot of people to be more interested in kind of like tropical style drinks. I think this is really, um, it's just a great drink. It's one of my favorites. I make it all the time for friends and family and it's never had a bad review. Our next drink is the Pina Verde, a tasty riff on the Pina Colada. I'm going to be making this using an immersion blender. I live in a tiny New York apartment and I just don't have the room for a big old Vitamix blender. If you've got one of those, definitely use it. If you don't have any type of blender, you can just shake this with cracked or crushed ice and it'll turn out great. First up is half an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Next is three quarters of an ounce of cream of coconut. I like Coco Lopez, but there are other good brands out there. I recommend letting this come up to room temp before trying to work with it. It'll be easier to pour that way. Now we're adding an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. And finally, an ounce and a half of green chartreuse. This is a French liqueur that's been produced by Carthusian monks for literally hundreds of years. The recipe is a closely guarded secret, but if you've never had it, it's got an herbal vegetal sweetness to it. Honestly, it's kind of hard to describe it, at least for me anyway. But it's the star of the show in this drink and definitely what sets it apart from your average frozen cocktail. Now I'm gonna add a handful of ice and blend it into a smoothie. And let's garnish with a sprig of mint. Here we have the Pina Verde. Uh, obviously a really cool greenish color, very unique drink. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so good. It all blends together so well. It's just so balanced. You get the pineapple that plays off nicely with the cream of coconut. You've got the lime there to kind of cut out that sweetness. And then underneath all of that, you've got the green chartreuse with that those herbal notes. This drink represents to me what Eric does so well. He takes something we're very familiar with, the pina colada with the coconut and the pineapple, and swaps out one ingredient essentially. He swaps out the green chartreuse for the rum. 
and it's just, it takes it to another level. When you have it, you think, why didn't I think to do that? Well, someone did, and it's Eric Castro. Like, that's why he's a cocktail genius. Next up is the Friends with Benefits. And this is the one that I'm so excited to bring to you because like I said, I don't think I've ever seen it anywhere else. I had it on the first time I was ever at Boilermaker. I remember loving what I drank, but not knowing what was in it or what it was called. It was one of those kind of nights. So I did some internet sleuthing and I was able to track down a photo of the menu on Yelp. And it had a picture of the drink that I had ordered. So at that point I had a name and that's when I was just like, you know what, why don't I reach out to Eric? Maybe he'll tell me what was in it. So I reached out to him, I think it was like a year ago when I first asked about this. Uh, he graciously provided me the recipe and I've been making it at home ever since. It's just an awesome drink that I think um, you're really gonna like. So uh, let's get started on the Friends with Benefits. First up is two dashes of absinthe. I keep mine in an atomizer, so I'm just gonna give it a few spritzes. This isn't gonna be a dominant flavor, but it is going to inform the rest of the drink. Next up is three quarters of an ounce of grenadine. I made this myself using pomegranate juice and sugar. It's super easy. Now it's time for three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And now we're adding a half an ounce of slow gin, which is made by steeping slow berries in gin, resulting in a tart berry liqueur. There aren't a lot of companies producing traditional slow gin these days. Some bottles to look out for are Sipsmith and Plymouth, but you're gonna wanna avoid anything made with neutral grain spirits and artificial flavorings. That stuff is trash. And lastly, an ounce and a half of gin. Eric calls for navy strength in his recipe, which I am sadly lacking at the moment. So I'm just gonna use regular strength and hopefully no one will hold it against me. There we have it. Now let's add ice and give it a shake. Now I don't have a traditional pearl diver glass like it's pictured in on the Boilermaker menu, but this glass from Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta looks close enough to me. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let's garnish with a lime wheel and drop in a straw. All right, there we have it. The friends with benefits, gin, slow gin, absinthe, lime juice, and grenadine. A unique combination, a uh, delicious combination. Let's give it a try. Mm. It's just so good. It's tart. It's got an underlying kind of like bitter uh, taste because of the absinthe in there. The gin, that's the backbone of it. You really get the juniper from the gin kind of throughout. That's kind of the, that's what holds it all together. If you make this for someone, I can almost guarantee you they will never have had it. You will have served them something they've never tried before. To me, it kind of represents, you know, I think I first had it back in 2017 when I first moved to New York. Um, and it just represents that time of my life, you know? So maybe there's a little bit of nostalgia here, but the drink is still really great on its own. All right, there we have it. Three of Eric Castro's cocktails. These are three of my favorites of his. I definitely couldn't do all of his drinks in one video. That would be impossible. These drinks here though, they all have the through the mixing glass seal of approval for whatever that's worth. Uh, it's very little, but you know, it's got the seal of approval. Uh, you should definitely check out the Bartender at Large podcast that Eric hosts. If you aren't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit like and share it with your friends. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Through the Mixing Glass, where I will make more drinks that are hopefully as good as these. We'll see. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.